record. Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning to everybody. And, uh, Happy New Year. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and get started when you're ready to uh, open your opening statement. Yeah, it's um, 2022. Um, in some ways, it doesn't seem a lot different than uh, than last year with uh, with with some of the COVID stuff that is that is obviously a a very hot topic and um, and understandable. Um, it's um, it's been an interesting uh, time since Missouri uh, for us. Um, from the standpoint, it's been a little bit different. Um, uh, obviously, we enjoyed our Christmas break coming off that Missouri game, and um, then on reentry on the twenty sixth, um, just had a. Um, um, uh, as university policy uh, had to test back in, and uh, we were hit um, uh, with uh, uh, a boatload of, uh, of of positive tests that have, have kept us sidelined. Obviously, we're we're following university protocols, we're following CDC protocols, um, and uh, so we have been at um, literally at. Um, uh, the day-to-day -day updates, uh, obviously going from 10 days to five days was, was, was impactful. Uh, obviously the Big Ten, their involvement, uh, not having forefoots, uh, moving to, uh, to cancellations or postponements and not forefoots um, was uh, fantastic as we got an opportunity to, uh, to reschedule. Obviously not having, uh, having the ability to play uh, instead of four foot, you've got to have seven guys and, and, a, and a coach. Um, that uh, just makes sense. And uh, we, we do have a little bit of time on our hands to, to redo that. Hence, um, appreciative of, of, of the, the cooperation of Minnesota. It worked out great with them in terms of them having a bye after our game. Um, but uh, not be able to play on Sunday. Uh, and then to... Uh, uh, be able to, to reschedule um, this here in, in, in the last couple of days to, uh, to, to get an opportunity to play and, and uh, I think keep everything in perspective that uh, there's tremendous value in a Big Ten championship uh, to try to get his, uh, all the games in. Uh, it pinches us on the back end, but that's okay. It's COVID. Um, you know, NCAA tournament's a one day prep. Uh, but um, again, so we've, um, We've we've had a, had a couple of days here with back with uh, the majority of our group, um, and uh, they came back at uh, different times due to some inconclusive tests uh, taken on the first day, which uh, then had to be taken the next day. Uh, we're following all the protocols with guys wearing masks uh, that are they're coming out of the of the uh, uh, out of their positive test. We'll see what that looks like for tomorrow's game. I don't know yet. But um, uh, it's been a very different Christmas break. Instead of having two a days, uh, we did nothing. So we've, we've done very, very little activity at all. The guys who were positive, uh, and we've had uh, 10 in our group uh, that were positive. So they have done nothing. They've been secluded and, and, and stuck, stuck away in their apartments. So um, we'll, um, you know, in trying to get them back uh, touching a basketball, uh, obviously the three days off with the um, mandatory NCAA Christmas break right after, uh, you're looking at a long period of time where guys haven't had a ball in their hand, haven't done anything physically at all. So, um, you know, we're, um, we're, we're back and uh, we're going to play a game tomorrow. We're going to play against a very, very good Minnesota team uh, who Ben, in my opinion, is, is, has done just an unbelievable job of putting a team together. Uh, eight, nine transfers. They're old. Um, they've, they've done it with upperclassmen. Um, in my opinion, that's, I've got a lot of respect for the way they've put that team together because they've got it with, with old guys. Um, and uh, they have been uh, uh, extremely surprising, I think, to everybody in terms of uh, the road wins early. Uh, they've got three power five road wins. Um, and uh, they've done it with great offense, uh, great, uh, the, the inability to never turn the ball over. Um, and uh, they've guarded the three-point line extremely well uh, as they move uh, into conference play. So we know we've got, a, got, uh, got our hands full. 
and uh, we'll see what that looks like and we'll progress and um you know the uh <clears throat> it's 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 always next man up kind of mentality it's been that for us all semester uh, i think we've had three guys suit up every game uh for us and and uh so everybody's got to be prepared everybody's got to be ready and and we know that uh uh we're gonna have our hands full in uh in the barn Brad, uh, respecting individuals' privacy, can you speak to the severity of COVID among the positive cases? I mean, I think everybody's different, so I'm not going to go through every player singular. I mean, every it's impacted everybody differently. So, um, you know, some of the cases were were mild, some were were more were more severe. So, it's just been um, you know a positive is a, a positive, and it doesn't matter the the severity of it. Truthfully. And if I'm understanding you, are there some guys that may play tomorrow that have not yet uh, practiced? And uh, what might conditioning be like? What might conditioning be like tomorrow? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Guys have practiced. We've been, we have been, we have, uh, I think that was one of the, the big concerns as welfare of us, our student athletes coming back after having such a long layover and or layoff, excuse me. And part of that was with the NCAA uh Christmas break and and um you know we've got uh got a lot of people doing a lot of different things uh some not testing some testing uh so it's uh it's a it's a challenge that way because we we those guys didn't do anything we did nothing so um obviously conditioning is going to be a be be something that's important and and we don't want to jeopardize our student athletes long term by putting them out there uh playing at the highest levels. Uh, they're all high level athletes and, and then putting them in a situation where they can be hurt because uh, they haven't had any time to, to practice. And so we've, uh, uh, we've had a couple of days and, and uh, that's, uh, that's what we've got. Brad, are there uh, guys gonna be wearing masks while they play? Is that what you're saying? To be determined, yes. It's part of the CDC policy. Uh, if you if you watch any games on TV, TV, Rob, I I watched the Wisconsin game the other night. They had a young man in a mask. I watched Boston College, North Carolina yesterday. Um, they had Boston College had players in masks. So um, you know, I, I think there's some <clears throat> you know some interesting challenges with that. I don't know where we're going to be at at with that in our process in terms of levels and so on and so forth, but. Uh, Again, those are things I just deferred to our medical team and, and the Big Ten's medical uh, officers. Will there be any <clears throat> changes at the university level, DIA level, or team level in your day-to-day -day operations and protocols to prevent spread? Yeah, I think that, you know, I think we're, we're, we're definitely all masked up in our building. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're, very, we're very conscientious of how we travel and wearing masks and understanding we're getting on uh, airplanes, we're getting in buses. Um, you know, I think the thing is, Rob, you can't just do it at home, you know, and, and that's one of the great challenges. You know, not everybody's doing the same thing. We got teams that uh, around the country that aren't testing. There's still a lot of games going on. So, you know, what you do at home can't just be at home. You know, it's gotta be something that's, uh, when you go on the road and play and compete on the road, um, you know, it's, 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 um, you know, we're, we're still exposed to, to all those th things on the road as well. Last one for me, following up on that. Um, all the guys seem pretty excited about going home for Christmas when we talk to them. Are there any regrets now looking back at uh, letting them all out in the world? No, I, you know, I think at the time we were, we were dialed into what was, what was happening in the, in the, in the United States. I think we were, we were obviously concerned about, the variant and and what it was, but uh, again, you know, it's we've got a we've got a group that is um, that that everybody here in this building right now is 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 vaccinated and and uh, and so you feel like we've done everything that we could possibly do to help protect it, and yet we know that this this variant is is uh, uh, spreads quickly and is is very easily uh, obtainable. So. Uh, Unfortunately, we unfortunately or fortunately depends how you want to look at it. We, we got a bunch of guys with it. Thanks. Brad, you said 10 in your group. Are those all players? 10 in our possible? group. Yes. 
10 in our group. Okay. So all the, the 10, so is we did not, we did not meet the seven. We did not meet the, the level of seven to play in any type of game over the, over that time period. Sure. No, no coaches had it. Okay. Are, are you guys testing again every day? We are testing for various levels of what is, and I'm going to mess this up. I should probably have a medical expert, but, but for various levels of, uh, of where it's transmittable, there are certain levels of it. And, and uh, again, CDC policy. So our, our guys who have been positive are testing to make sure their levels are at a certain point and it gets them away from mask wearing and it gets them, um, able to handle, able to do that. So those guys are tested. Okay. Did you expect this? I mean, at some point this season, did you go into this realm of saying we're probably going to be on pause at some point? I didn't know if we would be on pause simply because of, of, of the vaccine. I think this was a completely different time, Brett, than a year ago. Last year, there were so many unknowns. Uh, last year, we were all doing the same thing. We spent all fall, all summer, uh, putting a plan together. Um, and, and obviously the variant came back. It's winter. It's this, it's, it's sick. It's, it's, you know, we've had guys with bronchitis. We've had guys with strep throat. We've had guys with the flu and we've played, uh, it's that time of year. Um, I thought the, the, the ability to be vaccinated, uh, potentially have everybody boosted, uh, as we work through that process as well, uh, would, would, would allow us to have a, have a season and, uh, you know, but I thought that, uh, you know, we eliminated contact tracing pretty much because of the vaccine. So, um, yeah, I, I, I figured we would be, we would have issues, but I didn't know if we would have a pause. Thanks. Hey, Brad, do you expect the entire team to be available tomorrow? Minus Austin Hutcherson and Andre Curbelo. And well, then, yes. Okay. And then uh, is there anything you said, fortunately or unfortunately, um, I, I guess the timing of this would be better than February or March for you guys. So uh, is, is there any different kind of policy with the guys who have had it now moving forward? Like, is there any different protocol that they have to follow um, or don't have to follow? Yeah, Jeremy, I think that's still to be determined. I, I, I don't think, you know, I, and I don't know this yet. I mean, we don't know if you can still contract this if you've had it. Um, so I, you know, in, in what has been this virus to this point, it's been very hard to get it. That's why they've set aside the, the 90 days, uh, you know, policy. So I, I hope that means we're good, um, uh, you know, with, with those guys. But, um, again, I, I, as soon as I say that, then we'll have somebody get it again in two weeks or three weeks. So I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of turn there, but, uh, I hope so. I hope, I hope that's truly the case. And, and, and uh, that 90 days is a, is a pretty good qualifier for what looks like uh, getting us through the end of the season. Thanks, bro. Hey, Coach, I guess I'll kind of take this another way. You've spoken a lot about the toughness and maybe lack thereof this season for your team, having been out for the last however many days, limited practice time, guys coming in and out. How much is this game against Minnesota and then a quick turnaround against Maryland going to test that and where you guys are at with that? Absolutely. And I think it's, it's the, uh, um, it, it, it's, I don't want to say the culmination, but, but being able to have so many guys out through the, through the fall, which we have, and guys play different positions has created an atmosphere where we guys have played and guys have gotten minutes and guys are going to have to do that. And, you know, it's, it's not just this game, it's the Maryland game after on Thursday. Um, you know, it, it's, to say that, um, you know, we're at our peak would probably be uh, uh, stating something that's not true, um, you know, being off that long. Uh, but, uh, but it's next man up and everybody's got to go in and contribute and do their part. And, and uh, we're going we're gonna to strive to, to, uh, to be the best we can for the 40 minutes it takes on uh, Tuesday night. You speak a lot about how when you guys are trying to build toughness, it's on the defensive end. It's being able to fight through when you're tired or go to the free throw line and make a bucket when you need it. Is that something that's going to be more difficult potentially tomorrow night because of the conditioning aspect of things with guys being out of practice? Well, the one thing you can never, you can never, um, 
underestimate is the great drug of adrenaline. And uh, that, that helps you persevere and push through some tough time. So, you know, it's a little bit different in, in, in practice and, and we've gone, we've gone, you know, the, as hard as we feel like we can go and, and not just uh, put our guys in an uncomfortable situation. Uh, but yeah, there's no doubt game, game, game speed's different. Um, and, um, you know, there, there's no doubt they'll get a little tired a little quicker, but I think once they get their second win, adrenaline kicks in, some of these guys will be, be fine. And again, I, I should mention, Alec, I think everybody's different, you know, you know, Trent Frazier's, uh, got a little different body type and, and athleticism and ability to recover quicker than, uh, than what, you know, you or Jeremy Warner may be able to do, you know, so it's just, it's one of those deals that everybody's got a, got a little bit of a, a, a different capacity there. Thanks coach. Appreciate it. Hey Brad, yeah, you were discussing boosters before all this happened. Is that something that's is still in progress with, with the team? Yes. Yes. We've got it. We've got a group that's had them and we've got a group who are on a little bit, little bit different timeline uh, based on when they've got their, uh, their, their, first and second booster. Okay. And I guess maybe with these plans during, you know, the Christmas break to go two a days, what weren't you able to tackle that you wanted to since you All couldn't practice? It. All of it. I mean, you, you know, it's nice when you want to go an hour and a half or two hours of offense in the morning and an hour and a half of defense in the afternoon and really, and, and really separate uh, the two and, and really get in and, and, uh, uh, be specific on certain things and not, not have convoluted practices where it's all kind of one, one together and, and you get really focused and, um, you know, we, we, we miss that. So, um, obviously we missed a game, uh, not being able to play Florida A&M and, 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 uh, and get the opportunity to, to get the kinks out and, and, and kick the rust off, so to speak. And now we've got to, you know, we're not the only team in the country that's going through this, and and uh, you know, we didn't uh, didn't get the rust off, but we'll we got a, we got a league game, and it is what it is. We got to go hoop. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Brad. Uh, obviously, this has been a, a big disruption for you guys, and like you said, you're not the only team. Um, I'm wondering, do you think that continuing to test uh, the way you guys have is is creating a competitive disadvantage for you guys, or are you not concerned about that? Our league, we will not test. We're not testing for the positive, uh, whether we're positive or negative. We're testing for the levels of because we're we're out of the five day window now um, with with everybody. So uh, once we once at this point in time, I'll be clear because everything can change day to day. Uh, our testing was university mandated. It was back based on re-entry back into the university. Um, and, and that's where that's, and that's what we did. So because of our vaccination and, uh, everybody that's here in this building is vaccinated, um, uh, that, that we will not test further than that. This is just for the levels of the mask wearing and whether this thing's contagious. So to be clear, like if somebody has symptoms going forward, like they won't need to be tested unless they, they want, will, if you're symptomatic, you will test. Okay. Okay. Just want to be clear. Um, and then is that, is that an Illinois specific thing right now? Or the big 10 does not have that in place. Is that correct? No, everybody's different. This is okay. a DIA. This is our DIA, DIA university policy. And, um, that's, um, that's, that's where everybody's got local governments and state. And, and, uh, I think that's when the initial policies were put in place in August to forfeit. Um, you know, those were, those were the decisions the big 10 made and, and, and athletic directors at that time to, uh, to make that decision. Now the variant has come back and, and, and those, those decisions were, uh, rethought a little bit and we got away from the forfeiture, but we've also left it very much at, at the discretion of, uh, uh, local governments and, and the universities. Thank you. Brad, would you have liked to see a standard procedure across the Big Ten for coming back from Christmas break? Well, you're trying to get me in hot water, Joey. Um, I, I think that it's, it's 
uh, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I, I think that we're at a point because of the vaccine that, um, uh, that that's a tough question to answer. I think that there are there are certain situations that are can be a uh, uh, a competitive imbalance for teams that test, teams that don't, and and uh, teams that. Uh, uh, look at this thing completely different. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to get drug into the political um, BS of all this, uh, but I, I'm just going to abide by what we have and, and know that uh, uh, we're going to do everything we can to keep our guys safe and healthy and, and on the right track. And then to build off Scott's question, in, in your press conference at Bragging Rights, you said we're going to get back to doing what Illinois does, and that's get better over Christmas break. Obviously, this is the first full-blown pause but you guys have had any number of, of some sort of interruptions dating back to when you started this how have you handled this as a coaching staff I mean just seems like every day is kind of a, a new adventure it is it has been and it's it's you know it's not been uh I, I don't, I don't want to say it's problematic I think it's all in my approach and I'm I I'm going to control what I can actually control um and um uh, I think that's the one thing, Joey, that I learned a lot last year in this is, is there are certain things that, that um, I have no control over. This happens to be one of them. Um, and I'm going to work every single day to get our guys to be the best they can be in that day and be better the next day than we were yesterday. And, and uh, you know, no matter what's happened the day before, that's all I can ask for. And so I'm really trying to keep it like that. Um, and, you know, you want to make plans and you had two days lined out and guess what? something a lot bigger than basketball happened. And, and you know, it, this, this, this COVID thing, it keeps popping up. So uh, we'll be flexible, but we're going to keep working to be the best we can be all the time. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Coach, for the guys that weren't positive, whether it be initially or throughout the whole thing, were they able to practice or, or do anything during this time? We did small amounts, obviously. Um, we, we, uh, we continued to lift them. Uh, with um, with Fletch, they were allowed they were allowed in oven allowed to be around, um, and then we did uh, we did a lot of individual work. Um, again, there's no there's obviously weren't, weren't enough to do much, um, and then we did uh, we did shooting, uh, kind of individual workouts for about uh, uh, forty five minutes to an hour every day. Um, and then they lifted with Fletch. So there's there's a group of guys that uh, that did get some conditioning in. I got to go a week without a Curbelo update question, so I guess I'll ask that one. Just anything new on his status or, or kind of how he's recovered? Yeah, he's progressing. Um, again, I'm you guys are tired of hearing that. He's he's made he's made improvement, um, and and is as he continues in this process of getting back uh, conditioning um and and his his physical therapy is, is is moving in the right direction so um yeah we're we're ex we're excited and hopeful here thanks hi coach uh you look at do you look at the uh stats for minnesota they've done a really good job de defending the three-point line uh, you guys rely on the three quite a bit and what are some keys for you to get some open looks make them um you know i mean they've I think the one thing that um, uh, Michigan State made 10, I think Michigan made nine. Uh, they, so in two Big Ten games, they've made 19, they've had 19 threes. Uh, you know, they're very, very sound. They're very conservative on the defensive end. They're just right in front of you. So they make you shoot over a hand all the time. And, um, you know, you've got to, you got to, you got to jump up and make them. And, uh, you know, we've seen, some elite defenses, Arizona, um, you know, everybody's kind of played us a different way. Um, you know, some guys have pressured, some guys have gone over, some guys have trapped. Um, so that's the one thing we have seen is a lot of different defenses. And, and uh, we're going to shoot our shots and everything again starts with, uh, you know, trying to uh, execute run good offense, not turn the ball over and, and, uh, and, and keep everybody involved. What, are, what what do you think are some other keys for you for you guys on Tuesday night? Turnovers. Um, again, I think that's one of the one of the areas that we're we're really trying to get better at. I think we're 150th in the country in turnover rate. 
Uh, and that's much better than the 300 we were after the first four or five games. Uh, but uh, again, I think we've we've got to, uh, uh, when you've got a top 10 offense in, in terms of OER, uh, you know, that's an area that you start really trying to nitpick on your weaknesses and that's one of them. And uh, that's an area that M Minnesota does not do. They don't turn the ball over. I think they're nine or 10 a game. And uh, you can't give a very good offensive team like them too many possessions that you don't get opportunities yourself to go down to the other end and score. So, um, you know, we've got to we got to do a better job taking care of the ball. Thanks, Coach. Brad, anything else that uh, stands out to you about uh, Minnesota and keys to this game? Yeah, I, you know, I think that they've 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 done an unbelievable job of of finding a way to play. I'm I'm really um, have enjoyed watching them play. Uh, Taylor Battle, a young guy that came, came came back home, was at George Washington. is a is a been a matchup nightmare. He's had big games uh, throughout the course of the season, and obviously Peyton Willis, kind of moving over from a wing spot back to the back to his probably his best position at the point, um, has been very very effective. And uh, and they've just they they've. they've they found a way to develop great chemistry, but uh, again, they've done it with age. Uh, they're old. You start looking down that roster, and and you know you got 23, 24 year old guys out there, and uh, they're playing the right way. Ben's put a plan in place. Uh, they're executing it, and again, it's why they they're they're off to a great great start. Many thanks. Brad, one, one more protocol question for me. We're all scheduled to be in a room with you in a couple of days. Uh, is that satisfactory to you? Would you like to see that change more Zoom? Depends. If you guys wear deodorant and brush your teeth, I'm all good. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Brad, the obvious question is, does this force you in the middle of January to kind of go deeper into your bench than you normally would? And, and does the conditioning of your guys force you, force you to kind of play more minutes? Probably. Probably. You know, I think that I think we all monitor that. I think every game's different, Matt. I think once we get to, um, you know, you, you start um, you start looking at the runs that take place. If they're three or four minute, five minute runs without any stoppage, yeah, you're probably going to have to go a little bit deeper because your recovery time may not be as quick for certain guys. Um, you know, I, I, I tell everybody that you know being in great shape is not how long can you play; it's how quickly can you recover. And, and that's one of the challenges of those long runs is, is that you, uh, it takes a little while longer to, to, to recover. So, you know, we'll monitor all of our guys that way. And um, again, it's, it's um, you know, I think I said it earlier, it's one of the advantages of having to play, you know, Pods and Luke and RJ and, 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 and Ben and get all those guys a lot of minutes uh, throughout the course of the season. So they're not in, in shell shock when, uh, when we have to put him out there in, in a Big Ten game. And that was my follow-up is that it seemed like Pods had gotten some early run in the last couple of games, especially in the bragging rights game. Is that just rewarding a kid for practice or, or what, what was that about? Earning respect, earning it, earning it. And I mean, he's played great and in practice and he's been a guy that, that I built um, uh, confidence with and, and, and I'm, I'm learning to trust what he's doing on the floor at both ends. And, uh, more so on the defensive end, and uh, you know we all know he can make shots, and uh, but it's 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 uh, it's been something we've been looking for as a guy who can give us minutes, to, you know, to help with Trent. He can play both spots and and Plummer, uh, and, uh, and 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 Demonte really uh, keeping those three guys minutes in a in an area that uh, is manageable over the course of the long haul. And Pods has earned that right and been great. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'm going to transition. We'll have we'll rejoin here in a minute with uh, Trent.